It's a surreal thing to be racing around inside of Paradise City again. EA sent me a code for Burnout Paradise remastered for Nintendo Switch, and I have to tell you, I felt guilty playing this game. It's so ridiculously fun. I've spent so many hours racing around Paradise City and Big Sur Island. I loved this game when I played it on uh, the PlayStation 4 Pro, and I've got it on my Xbox One X. It's just such an incredible experience, and I'm going to tell you right from the get-go here, it is phenomenal on Nintendo Switch as well. It's definitely not as pretty as we've seen on machines with a little bit more horsepower, but it still moves and flies at the exact same velocity at 60 frames per second, and it is uh, it is something to behold. My daughter had not seen this game before, and I wanted to show her just how crazy and kinetic and out of control burnout could be, and so I put it on for her, and I just watched her eyes just go like, what is happening? Because you're barreling through intersections and crashing through uh, billboard signs and bashing through obstructions, making your own way through the alleyways and over cliffs and giant jumps and leaping off of parking installations and just finding all of the unbelievably cool hidden treasures that this game provides. It's incredibly addictive and I even though I've become addicted to it every single time I've played it, whether it was on the 360 or you know the modern consoles, and here again on Nintendo Switch, it, it's an amazing pull that this game has. And it's also quite phenomenal to be able to take the Nintendo Switch out of the dock and play Burnout in the palm of your hands. Burnout Paradise at this fidelity, at this speed, and I've got my Joy-Cons are rumbling along and I'm racing along in handheld mode. It's crazy. There's so much traffic to avoid, so much debris to leave a the tarmac whenever you wreck your vehicle and there are so many cool racing modes that you just activate by being in the right uh, intersection at the right time you tap the shoulder buttons and boom you're on a race or boom you're on a race but you're also trying to take out all of the opponents that are trying to take you out as well or you've got to chain together a bunch of cool stunts and tricks and get that high score and you're trying to level up inside of the game and get those acknowledgments on your license which is a very cool thing you can't take a photo of your own face and stick it into the game but, you know, my little avatar was uh, Mario, which was very cute. It was cool to have a driver's license with Mario's face on it. And so what you do in the game is you just look for crazy activities to get involved with. And, of course, this game, because it's been so many years, includes everything. All of the DLC. You've got Big Surf Island, so you get the cool dune buggies and, you know, the vehicles that are sort of more suited for sand racing and off-road racing. You also get uh, all of the DLC car packs, like the legendary cars. So you've got homages to Ghostbusters and Knight Rider and Dukes of Hazard, but you know, of course, the big daddy for me is the DeLorean look-alike, which actually hovers and it's just insanely fast. My kids' eyes were like, what? When, you know, when I was hovering and flying, she's seen Back to the Future too, so she totally got that. Um, super, super cool. Love all that. You've also got the little toy cars. You've got motorbikes. Uh, you've got trucks. It's a little bit of everything. It's just super, super crazy fun. I mean, that's that's the core of it. This is a game that absolutely has deserved, the, you know, the, this love and adulation and this remastered treatment for the various consoles. And it's just so fantastic that it runs as well as it does on a Nintendo Switch. But clearly, you know, it's an older game, and of course it was going to hold up. It looks great on TV, and it, and it totally pops off the screen when you're in handheld mode. Now, you can see some aliasing, and it can be a little bit difficult to make out all of the details, which can be a bit of a problem because you're hurtling down the road so fast pressing on the boost button and bashing through all kinds of uh, you know fencing and stuff and things are flying around all over the place but you know what you just find the groove and you have a big giant smile on your face and you're rocking out to this now classic soundtrack because it's all music from uh, a decade ago or more um, and you just uh, you bask in it man you just feel like you're in that warm bubble bath of awesome this game is phenomenal and it's an instant pickup for the nintendo switch provided of course you don't already own this and potentially you may already own this in, in multiple ways um so you may not necessarily need it for your nintendo switch but god can you believe that we live in a time where we can play a game that's as huge as this this huge massive sprawling open world map that just goes on and on and on and provides this much and you can play it in handheld mode as well as on the big screen it's just phenomenal great job ea but you know what? This totally underlines the fact that EA needs to give Criterion the opportunity to build us a brand new Burnout game. Could you imagine what that would look like on the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X or the next generation of Switch? 
That's what we want. EA, come on. I know you're watching this. Make us a new Burnout, all right? In the meantime, we'll be playing Burnout Paradise Remastered because it's amazing. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 on the Switch. It's not the best version of the game, but it's damn good.